Uh, let's talk about the conditions of debates. What make a debate a successful debate? Yeah, I think uh, in order for it to be successful, the person should have knowledge, right, about what they're going to be speaking about. So in order for them to convey appropriately what they're trying to convince the other party. So first they have to have knowledge. You can't come to a, a debate without having knowledge. A lot of people in Islamophobia don't have the knowledge and then they're on the other side. They're trying to argue a fact where they have no knowledge about and their facts are completely wrong. But I mean, if I'm putting myself in that position where I'm coming to, you know, maybe debating with a person who has, who's Islamophobic, I should be able to have enough knowledge in myself about Islam and how to convey. So I think it's also being able to then speak and enunciate your thoughts clearly. Um, so first having the knowledge, sometimes you have the knowledge, but you're not able to verbalize it or put it in proper, um, like a proper way to for somebody to understand. So that also is, um, I think, extremely important in order for a debate to be successful. That's absolutely correct. That's right. So first to have knowledge. Very good. Yes. Uh, not only knowledge, also that you have to be skillful in the way that you express yourself and put the words and be concise and go like point by point real quick. This is how debate is because usually debate, you have a time frame. When they start with a debate, they start like, for example, 20 minutes for the first party, 20 minutes for the second party. Then they, you know, that's if there is a moderator, of course, in the, in the middle. But you see in most debates that happen, especially like, for example, on social media, like Facebook, uh, we used to have a, a debate platform a long time ago. Um, uh, we used to do that between Christians and Muslims, uh, like the Arab Christians, they love to debate so much. Uh, it's called Pal Talk. It used to be Pal Talk. Now we have another platform it's called that I hate so much and I don't like it, Clubhouse. It's called Clubhouse. Now we have another debate platform that they do. And what I don't like about the Clubhouse that they don't have a moderator. People can jump on each other on the mic. The other thing also that if you come into a group that it is not your group and you cannot moderate that group, and they can either, the other person, if they don't like your answer, they can actually delete your answer, which really will make you so mad. <laughs> that happened to me so many times. Or they can close the discussion so you cannot respond to them. Or they can uh, actually, what they can do is uh, they can kick you out of the group. And I mean, look at Ibrahim over here. He's actually in a, that situation, in that position that he is on the ground of the, of the sovereign king, of that king that he is standing there with his full power and authority, with all these people around him that's cheering him up, right? And if you go into a group, for example, that it is a Christian group, right? Or do you go to a group that it supports, for example, the LGBT, whatever group is, and you are the only one there, trust me, it will not turn out good <laughs> at all, you know, because everyone will, will, will put you down, will say something to, and it will frustrate you. It will make you feel sick. It will make you feel sad, right? And you get out thinking that, Maybe I did something wrong, right? If you don't have the self-confidence and you don't have the good knowledge and people would knock you down like that, trust me, that person will feel will feel unsupported, will feel sad, will feel that they are defeated. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, it's actually in Surah An-Nisa in chapter 4, Ayah 140, it says, and it has already come down to you in the book that when you hear the verses of Allah recited, they are denied by them and ridiculed. Do not sit with them until they enter to into another conversation. Indeed, you would then be like them. Indeed, Allah will gather the hypocrites and disbelievers in health all together. So we ask, like, look at those, like, there are going to be some Muslims that they will sit there and they will listen to, to the conversation and do nothing, right? And in them, inside them, and this, in their heart, they start also uh, empathizing with that oppressor with that person who is knocking the Muslim down, right? And I've seen it a lot. 
Now, those are, have some type of hypocrisy in their heart. And if they stay there too long, they will become as one of them. They will become as one of them. So it's better to stay away from those people. And so when you are going to do a debate, try to find a platform or a ground where you, it is either in your side or in a place where it is neutral, that both sides can have the same power equally. Now, in Abraham, he did not have any choice. He tried to minimize the debate as much as he can and not to get into a sick argument and a useless argument with him. So when Abraham said, my Lord is the one who gives life and causes death, that's a fact, right? He did not argue. He did not try to prove it or anything like this. So he said, the king, I give life and cause death. So now Ibrahim, his response was one response. That's it. That was, that's what he did. Abraham said, indeed, Allah brings up the sun from the east. So bring it up from the west, just like that. If you really think that you're God and you can cause death and you can cause life, as you say, then here's the sun right in front of you. It comes from the, from the east. Why don't let it come from the west? So at this time, he kind of like knocked him out. Everybody around him knew that this king is a liar and he's a fraud. He's a fake uh, God, as you say, right? And Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, gave the victory to Ibrahim alayhi salam just by that. And this king couldn't do anything at the moment. He could not do anything. He could not answer him. This king was a tyrant and he could take Ibrahim alayhi salam and put him in jail or kill him. But because he heard the story of him being saved from the fire after he was put in the fire and he got saved from he probably got scared and he didn't take him. But Ibrahim alayhi salam knew that he was in danger by staying in that city. 